So in general, so when I'm feeling a bunny bladder, um, a lot of times what you're doing is you're trying to feel it kind of, you know, blip between your fingers as you're moving your hands back and forth. And so it should feel pretty much like a little balloon, a little soft, mushy balloon. And so you can use this to kind of, you know, try to get an idea of what it would feel like as it would go through your fingers. The other thing is, is sometimes the bladders are very um, uh, soft and, and there's not a lot of muscle tone. And so you're pushing and you're pushing and then nothing is coming out because it's all pushed away. And then you have to relax and then let it fill up again. And then you can push again and then it kind of some pushes away and so sometimes what you're also doing is you're kind of feeling you know which is the best way to do it sometimes you kind of have to cup your fingers around it and you're also pushing up against the um, the spine usually as well or even pushing kind of side to side okay and this is you know kind of with a bunny like standing position so um, in terms of bladder size so this would be like a normal size full bladder, maybe a little bit bigger, could be a full bladder. Um, in most bunnies that we're gonna be expressing, their bladder might be medium or, or large. This is a fairly large bladder. Um, you know, they can get bigger than this and certainly that's not good. You know, um, Marshy's bladder usually is maybe a little bit bigger than this when I express her bladder, so. Um, when it's small like this, you may not be able to feel it much or express it much, but the bigger it gets, the easier it is to express. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do it. The first way is, you know, usually you've got your sink here and you kind of pushing on their bladder. And I know, I know, you don't like this. Now the other thing is, is that you see there's like a V. Can everybody hear me? There's a V down here and it comes to a point and then the bladder usually sits right about there okay and so that's what you're pushing for so if you're too far down you're going to miss it but if you're you know so you might want to go up a little bit higher but not too far up okay so sometimes if you just kind of rub the area if it's just really full then they'll just get a stream coming out but usually what i'm usually going to do with most bunnies is I'm right-handed and so I'm gonna reach under their belly and then try to feel it between my fingers and usually I'm gonna kind of tuck them under my arms here I know so like this position okay so which she doesn't like as you can see usually when I express her she's laying in this position her favorite position and I just go from the side here okay so is this the body that's hard to express yes oh yes so, so this is, I'm just feeling to feel if her bladder is if anything that anybody could really feel. It's not very obvious, so it's like, <laughs> so, so it would be right about there. And you can certainly express them in this, um, in this position as well. And so the other thing is, is that a lot of times as you're feeling the bladder, as you're getting and pushing on it, their tail flips up. Okay, it's called flagging. And that's when you know you're on the bladder, okay? And if you're touching and touching and touching and all of a sudden the tail goes up, that's where you wanna press in that area. But you're also kinda, you know, cupping and moving your fingers around, so. Because it is harder to express her, mm -hmm. and um, what happens is, is, and it's not a comfortable thing for her, mm -hmm. because she has the increased sphincter tone, it's a little bit of, you know, I have to push on it, push on it until the sphincter releases, mm -hmm. but I can't push too hard. And so there is some feeling and some discomfort, and so if it's a smaller bladder, it's not as easy, and then she's uncomfortable. So what I do is I actually do her once a day, because it's larger, easier to express, and then she only has the discomfort once a day. But in most cases, we do recommend twice a day. Some people are actually able to do it three times a day. So, and so she does not pass any urine on her own, but she does poop on her own. So, so with massage, um, basically, it's going to be just kind of general. You can do kind of, you know, circular motions and just general massage. When you're massaging their legs, just kind of rubbing between your fingers, not too hard. If they're uncomfortable, they're usually going to pull away from you, so you don't want them to be uncomfortable. And so you can just kind of rub things, massage things. And then the range of motion exercises. A lot of times what we do is we put them, we call this the, like a, you know, kind of like baby position, like this. And then what you want to do is you have your, your hock, 
your knee and the hip joints and you want to flex them and extend so and she's you know she's look very twitchy so but here this one flexes a little bit better and so these are some neurologic uh, like that's called the crossed extensor reflex when I messed with this and then this one went straight so um, like that. Yeah. She can so, definitely extend. Yeah, so she can definitely extend. So so um, and then also you could do the try the front legs too. They don't always like that, so this is flexing. And then you can kind of flex the shoulder and you can kind of extend at the elbow. Go in and out. So the thing is you want to do is you don't want to do it where it's uncomfortable. Right here she's kind of stopping a little bit. Okay, and so sometimes you just kind of hold that. So she's not, and then release. that's involuntary then, The right? twitching, yeah, it's involuntary. Oh, oh, okay. You don't want to like really, you know, pull them or stretch them. You want it all to be like normal bunny positions, okay? Now the other thing that we do with, and this helps with the proprioception, kind of, you know, the nerve function going from her feet and back up, is tickling and stimulating their toes. See, when I touch it, then we got the spreading of the toes, and some bunnies, you know, if you kind of touch the toes and she's got kind of a little bit of movement going and you can kind of rub the bottom of her feet and she's actually kind of pulling her legs around. And so this just stimulates the nerves to kind of feel things. So, so she's not totally paralyzed in her. Well, it, right. It's, it's mostly paralyzed. So, And some of this may just be the nerves that go from the spinal cord and back and not up to her brain. But still, in, in early cases, I mean, and obviously with her, she's never going to walk. But in early cases, if you start stimulating things and start, you know, the range of motion exercises, that's going to help a lot. Whoops. There we go. Okay. And then you can just kind of walk around the house and let her, you know, have a little walk there. Just kind of support her so she can and this is good because it also will help them use their front legs you can see how the left front is kind of sliding out because of how she's tweaked herself but you also do want a very secure surface so she uh, and it, it just it helps to increase the um, uh, muscles of her front legs as well and so if you were going to get a cart this would be something to kind of start doing to get her used to walking around yeah, there she is. So you can see how abnormal looking her hocks are. They don't, they're, they're thickened and swollen, but that's all bony changes. So she did have an infection recur on this left one um, that went up to the knee, but then we treated that. But she runs around, it doesn't hurt her. She does have some ulceration and scabbing, but even though he is, his, his dizziness issues are, are over and you know he's, he's not in an acute phase, Sometimes still, when you pick up a bunny who has a head tilt, they don't know where the ground is and they can get dizzy just from lifting them up and down. And so sometimes when we're treating them, we try to just treat them in place. But you can see, so he's got the head tilt, but he's okay. And so sometimes what you do is you start off with massaging the neck. Again, I usually like to do this with them sitting on all four feet. Some people will do this like holding them upside down on their lap, but I think that having their feet on the ground helps them. And so I'll just do this, and I'm not squeezing, but I am kind of holding like the cheekbones and the head and maybe a little bit on the cheeks. And I'm going to take the head and just kind of rotate it that way and just hold it as long as he'll let me. So and he's pretty pretty good about it so and then a lot of times if you do that a lot sometimes you can improve the amount of head tilt that they've got and um, so the ideal thing is you want to go past midline so then he'll normalize to midline so are you too stressed so I'm tickling deep in his ear so he's starting straightening his head a little bit and sometimes you can do that and you can kind of get him to, to turn his head the other way if they t if they'll take a treat you can put the treat here on the other side and try to get him to reach around to get the treat